and welcome to episode three of Coffee and Cloud. I'm Nick Smith, and this week I have Paul Schumann joining me, an IT industry veteran who ended up as a senior director at Microsoft, working with Azure Partners worldwide. This week we're discussing how partners are playing a vital role in driving cloud innovation. This week you'll also see that I have my eight-week-old son with me. Due to family illness, there was no one else to look after him, but I thought it reflected the realities of life. Life does not stop even when a child needs to be looked after, work needs to get done, and I didn't want to miss the opportunity to speak to Paul. So I decided to put him in a sling on the front of me and crack on with the interview. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. As always, please leave your thoughts and your comments below the video. Hi, Paul, and welcome to Coffee and Cloud. Thanks for agreeing to, to join me as a guest on episode three. Um, first thing to say is I've brought along my own staff member today, uh, the researcher. Um, unfortunately, there's been illness sweeping through the family, so you know, Dad's left holding the baby. Um, I hope, hope you don't mind the, the little one joining us today. No, not, not a problem. It's always great to see the little unpaid interns on screen there too. So welcome to him. And like I say, thanks for joining. It'd be great if you could um, tell our audience a little bit more about you, your journey, you know, how, how you started in the IT industry and obviously you know, your journey to Microsoft. Sure. Thanks, Nick. Again, happy to be here. Really always enjoy having our conversations together. You know, I've started my career several decades ago uh, as an analyst at DataQuest, which is now part of Gartner. And it's it's interesting because I started uh, even before there were personal computers at any sort of widespread scale. And first PC that I used was an Apple IIe to do our data forecasts and such. And I used that instead of using a uh, a timeshare computer that we had where I connected to the timeshare uh, device with a with a dumb terminal and it, it was pretty dumb. Um, but we've seen the technology go a long way. Uh, since that point, then I left to be part of a early stage startup that was um, a Silicon Valley based uh, reseller of IBM personal computers. It grew to over a billion dollars in revenue. I started as employee number 12, ended up uh, as the senior vice president of sales and marketing for the U.S. for the company, left there uh, when it was uh, when it was sold. Uh, went to work for a number of uh, early stage startups, uh, and then about uh, 20 years ago, went to to Microsoft, and I spent 16 years there, always in the partner organizations, uh, dealing with partners at a global level. Everything from global SIs like Accenture and and uh, HCL and and TCS and Capgemini uh, to MSPs uh, like Extrinsica, where I met you and your dad. Uh, and then for the last several years, dealing with partners as we transition them from being managed service providers to uh, purveyors of services around Azure and such. So for the last four years, and I've been, I, I retired from Microsoft and I've just been doing some consulting and advisory work for some early stage startups around the world always involved with the with the cloud industry. Yeah, that's a awesome journey. And I guess you've seen a massive transition from, like you say, old old school IT right through to you know, data center and then the, the cloud. What's that been like to see the evolution of IT? You know, I think about it from uh, two perspectives. One is being in the industry and uh, and then the other as, a, as more of a consumer side of how we actually use these cloud services and other IT services. And from the industry point of view, to me, the thing that is always amazing is the ongoing growth and innovation and change that's occurred in the industry. And it, it's not ever been a straight line. I mean, it's had its bumps and, and ups and downs and such, uh, you know, and we had everything from kind of the uh, early stage PC crashes to Y2K and the dot-com bust to the fallout of the financial uh, crisis in, in 2008. So there have been dips, like we're kind of going through a transitory period now. But the thing that's underlined all of this is innovation and growth and new products and technologies that are almost unimaginable. And I think about it even from the point of view of, you know, you've got coffee and cloud. Well, how do you get your coffee nowadays compared to just a few years ago when you would have gone to, you know, you would have walked into your local coffee shop. And at the time, 
you know, I remember a big, uh, big mantra of Starbucks was the third place. So you had your home, your office, and you'd go for your coffee and you'd sit in these coffee shops and uh, you'd work there and you'd do all this other stuff. And now what's your experience of getting a coffee? You go to your mobile device, you look at where the nearest store is, you order online, it knows what your favorite drink is. You go in, it tells you how many points you're going to yeah. get out of this. You pick it up, you pay for it automatically, and you're out the door. Yeah. And so it's, it's from a consumer, massive transformation from that technology, which was unimaginable even 10 years ago, much yeah. less 20 or 30 years ago. And that type of change that's become so pervasive to all of our lives is going to continue because of the great things that are done, not just from a pure technology point of view, but because of the way that people are innovating around business models and engaging with customers and engaging right. with leveraging technology. So I'm a, I'm a big believer that, uh, you know, we're going to continue to see lots and lots of growth in the industries. That's also like you say, it's not just the technology itself. It's the application of the technology. Um, yeah. And I, I guess what's interesting to me with you know, your background working with partners at Microsoft globally, you know, is that application of technology broadly driven by partners or is it a combination of partners and customers? Um, and what, what's the importance of partners going to be going forward with you know, the evolution of the cloud industry? You know, are they going to become an ever more important part of the, the recipe for applying technology for enterprise businesses? Yeah, well, I think it's interesting because partners uh, are such a broad term. And it's, it's also interesting how companies will view their ecosystem of partners, but then they'll be part of the ecosystem of another company's partners. So, yeah. you know, you've got all these different engagements. And uh, so partners play this valuable role that no single technology company in today's world and for the future, and even for the past couple of decades, can provide all of the technologies yeah. aside from the services to integrate them, but nobody has all the technologies. So you need to go out there and work together and, and put this stuff together, as well as then figure out how to apply to the business problems that we're talking about. So you've got this combination of just understanding how to make the technology work, which is, which is hard. It's gotten easier or more difficult depending upon the view, it's it's changed over time. And what you do now, you know, we're well beyond the days of doing simple break fix and maintenance and things like that, which is where the industry was, you know, in, in the past or standing up and doing implementations. No longer do people need to worry about how do I run and manage your exchange system? Nobody does that anymore. Yeah, They're I mean, that's what I used to do and uh, yeah, definitely don't do that anymore. That, that, that's right. That's all moved to the cloud, moved to the advantages of technology. But then there are new things that have occurred. How do I do that migration to get there? How do I work in an environment now where I've got uh, bad players uh, trying to attack my systems and 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 um, and hack what I'm going to be able to do? So you've got to be able to think about security and digital identity and trust in a very different fashion than what you've done before. So you're essentially moving up the the uh, the elevator, moving up the escalator, constantly finding that, that new technology. And that's the great thing is, these aren't elevators or escalators that have a top and a bottom. There appears to be no top. There's always new yeah. stuff that needs to be and done. It's, and that's the role of the, the system integrator, managed yeah. service provider, services partner, of taking advantage of this and solving the new problems that are going on as the core technology takes care of some of that real fundamental stuff on the bottom. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting point you raise actually around, you know, what's the value that you're adding to the solution or the outcome that you're delivering to customers as a partner. I remember you know, when I first met you all those years ago, it was really that transition away from, like you say, exchange server to um, hosted exchange and office 365 and I remember a, a number of partners in the room that we we're in you know up in arms about Microsoft going ahead and delivering this service and obviously where we are today is people have figured it out and they figured out where where do they need to add value how do they go up that elevator or, you know um, up, up, up the escalator to find the new piece of value that they add on top of that it's not about the the 
bare metal servers and the installation of the Exchange software anymore, but you know, how do we secure that email? How do we you know, provide additional services and wrap that around that email service? Um, yeah, exactly. so yeah. I, I've lived through that transition myself. So that is, is very, very interesting. And like you say, I think that's going to be something that's, that's always going to continue. There's always going to be new layers of abstraction that come along. I think we see this with Azure, you know, with the new platform services that are being delivered. You know, one example I can think of at the top of my head is you know, um, uh, container apps on Azure, for instance, you know, abstracting away the need to run a Kubernetes cluster. And how can partners and service providers and customers make value of these new services? Um, I definitely think that's going to be a trend that's going to continue, you know, forever more. Like you say, there's there's no no top floor to that, really, is there? So, from a partner perspective, Paul, I guess, you know, we're seeing globally a lot of change in the cloud industry. So, data sovereignty is obviously becoming a big issue. We're seeing the likes of the German and French governments dictating that you know data has to reside in country posing some challenges for the likes of, well, all the big cloud providers, um, Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. But also security, we're seeing major data breaches. We've seen a whole bunch out in Australia, for instance, and big tech companies out in Australia having significant breaches. You know, this, this kind of evolving cloud landscape and these emerging threats, you know, what does that mean for partners and how are partners gonna be able to, to deal with this? Well, I, I think you raise a, a very important question because one of the things that has clearly been occurring, as you say, is more and more threats as there's been more and more dependence that's gone into the cloud. And, and part of that is it's just the ne next level of exploitation as we've gone from hackers that are, you know, 14 year old kids sitting in a, you know, their bedroom at night on their Commodore 64 to people that were nefarious from the point of view of trying to do things from a um, uh, from a personal perspective, from a monetary perspective, so criminal activities that would be involved, to now we're seeing nation states using this as, as warfare. And um, I mean, that's, it's not good or bad, it's, it's bad at one level, but it, more importantly it is, so people now need to really think about this from what's their approach at both the strategic level as well as then tactical implementation. So the whole issue of advanced security, digital identity, trust, because trust is not just about security, but it's also about protection of somebody's identity and information. All of those things I think are, are absolutely critical. And I think it's gonna require a network of partners to be able to solve a problem. So if you think about a smaller country or organization who doesn't have the um, technical skills, maybe not even in country, they might need to work with with companies and partners that are global or outside of their country in order to get some of that. Yet at the same time, they're going to want to work with their own citizens and uh, and their own security clearances in order to have that level of protection. So it's going to be some combination of those. And, you know, the interesting dynamic that you're seeing is we're seeing some of the most secure, sensitive environments um, still moving to the cloud. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, there's been a big move with the U.S. military just a few days ago. There was the announcement of the reissuance of the Jedi yeah. contract, four players, nine billion dollars. I mean, over multiple years. So huge uh, thing. And I would I, I just philosophically would venture that. U.S. Department of Defense is fairly security conscious. Yeah. Another good example, a very different industry, as I saw today, that the London uh, Stock Exchange is now doing a major partnership with a major cloud provider, happens yeah. to be Azure. And so you've got a financial institution, which again, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say uh, London Stock Exchange cares deeply about security and privacy. So you get some of these leading things and obviously then there's a trickle down, but there's still the, how do I implement it at the ground level? Because not everybody's going to have the same sort of resources as DOD or London Stock Exchange. So how do smaller countries, smaller entities still take advantage of that? And that's where partners can really help them. But it may be a network of multiple partners that are going to be working together in terms of solving this. So kind of 
for partners, my advice would be figure out what your real value and differentiation is, and then figure out who you can partner with that can provide a complete solution. And if you think you've got a complete solution, you're probably wrong. Um, right. There's always yeah. going to be something that you need to extend into somewhere else. So think about having that network of partners. Not that you're going to bring every deal with, because again, customers have a choice in this, but that you know how to integrate these different pieces together and you've got that network if needed. Right. And I think kind of summarizing the, the discussion here, I think it's there's a massive opportunity for partners with the evolving cloud industry. You know, the, the elevator keeps going up, the escalator keeps going up with, without any top floor. So it's about finding out where your value is, how you keep adding value on top of you know, the evolving cloud services. But then also figuring out what you're good at and what you can specialize in. You can't be all things to all men uh, or women or people. Um, so it's figuring out what you're good at and then building partnerships with other partners um, to be able to have um, other capability in your armory so as you engage customers, you have a network where you can lean on those to deliver um, different pieces of a solution. Right. Yeah. Well said. Well restated. <laughs> Thank, thanks. I was listening, even with even with the yeah. researcher tied to my front. <laughs> That's right. Um, so look, we've come come to towards the end, end of our time, Paul, on uh, Coffee and Cloud today. I just want to say... A massive thank you for taking the time to speak to me. It's been great to get your insights and you know learn more about your journey. You know, I haven't haven't heard your your kind of end to end journey before, so it was fantastic to to hear that and to to gain some of your insights as well. Thanks very much. Happy to do this, Nick. Let's uh, do it again sometime in the future. Thanks for tuning in to episode three of Coffee and Cloud, and thanks again to Paul for agreeing to come on and share some of his insights on the cloud industry. And what are your thoughts? Do you agree that partners are vital to the continued innovation of cloud technologies? Or do you have a different view? I'd love to get your thoughts in the comments below.